to Ephesians chapter 6. We've been opening our Bibles to Ephesians for, man, months at a time, and there's only a couple weeks left uh, of the book of Ephesians, and then we'll begin a new series, but uh, I love walking through God's Word. I'm going to ask you to get something out to take notes, because there's going to be a few things you could write down today that I believe God is going to speak to your life, and so uh, let's dive in uh, to God's Word together. I don't know about your neighborhood, uh, but where I live and in my neighborhood, we have a lot of skunks. In fact, this morning as I was on my way to church, I smelled um, a deposit somewhere in our neighborhood of, of, a, of a tussle that a skunk had. It's interesting because when I'm driving home, I'll see them and a lot of times, like I said, in our neighborhood, we'll see a dead, dead skunk in the middle of the road. And it seems like we see more skunks dead than, than other animals. And I always wondered about that. And did you know there's actually a reason for that? The reason is, is that skunks have very few natural predators in our area. And so they are used to spraying a, a, a another animal or a person, and then they run away and, and uh, the skunk is safe because the skunk needs that protection because it's a slow animal, and, and so it just figures whatever it sprays will run away. So it sees a car coming towards it, and it assumes, I'll just spray the car, and it'll run away. How many of you know that a skunk versus a car, moving at any miles per hour, the skunk's going to lose? It's going to get smashed. That's just how it's going to happen. We're in a battle, you and I, and you can't fight in your own strength. You can't come against the enemy and say, I'm just going to spray a, a prayer. I'm just going to spray the name of Jesus and the enemy will flee. If you know the Bible in, in the book of Acts, there's, a, there's the sons of Sceva. Have you heard of them? They saw the apostles casting out demons, and so they came across a demon-possessed person. They didn't know who Jesus was, but they decided to use Jesus' name, and, and when uh, the name of Jesus was used to the demon, the demons looked at him and said, well, we know Jesus. We know Paul. Don't know you. Beat him up, stripped him naked, and sent him on their way. And so we do not want to fight without the proper armor. Amen. That's what I want to talk to you about today. None of us should go into battle without being armed, without being trained. We would never sign somebody up and give them a uniform, a gun, and send them into battle, right? There's boot camp, there's training. This is how you fight the battle. And since we're under attack, and it's my calling as a pastor to equip the saints, we're going to train for a battle today. Ephesians chapter 6, we're going to begin at verse 10. We're just going to kind of work our way through this passage of Scripture, and, and some of it will be review, but hopefully today we'll get trained for battle. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the, the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Look at that passage of Scripture. It'll be on the screen for just a moment, but look at what we're called to do. We're called to be strong. So there is this battle that is raging, but we're not to run away in the battle, that we're to take the enemy on, that we're to be strong even in difficult times, even in the most serious of battles. You and I are called to be strong. Jesus tells us this, and we don't have the strength to do it on our own. We have to do it in his strength, in his power, and with his armor on. See, we have an enemy. It says there, write that in that verse. It, it says we have this enemy that we can't see. We don't fight against people. We've already preached on this a couple weeks ago. You can go back and listen to any of these messages online, and, and we don't fight against circumstances or fate. We fight against an enemy in the spiritual realm that will use other people and circumstances, but it's the enemy that we have to come against because the enemy has a scheme or a plan or a method to take you down. The devil has a plan for your life, but that shouldn't scare you. 
you should stand strong. Because the methods and the schemes and the plans of the devil, they are so little in comparison to your God and what he has planned for you. And so I don't worry about what the devil has planned for me. I say, you know what? Greater is he who's in me than he who's in this world. And so I'm going to stand strong, and I'm going to keep standing because Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. It's plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Did you realize you were destined to win the battle that you're in? The outcome of the battle has already been it's been designed. It's in place that you are going to win. God has no desire to see you destroyed. He has no desire to see you at the, the plan of the enemy or the works of the enemy. He has a desire to see you grow and increase in every single area of your life, now and for all of eternity. So be strong. Know that God's plans for you are good. Now as we continue on in this passage of Scripture, we're going to look at the armor of God. It says in verse 13, therefore put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with the feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, which can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Be strong, like a good soldier equipped for the battle. In the Greek, this idea of battle is this hand-to-hand -hand combat, that you and I are in the fight of our life. This isn't just something where we're watching the battle, we're actually in the battle, and if we're in the battle, we need to know two things. We need to know our enemy, and we need to know our weapons. Now, we talked about the enemy a couple weeks ago, and it's not what we see. It's in the unseen world, but we already talked about that. And Dr. Paul preached an awesome message about that as well. And so you can go back and visit that. But we need to know our weapons. We need to know our protection. The Bears are going to play this afternoon in Las Vegas against the Raiders, and none of those men will run out of the tunnel without their helmets and their shoulder pads and their their knee pads, and they're, not, they're going to be fully equipped when they run out. No one is going to run out without their armor, without their protection. And God wants you not to run into battle unprotected. He wants you to stand firm in the victory that you have, but you have to stand with the armor of God. Paul's writing this in, Ephesus, or in Rome to the Ephesian church, and so he's in prison under house arrest, and there's probably a Roman soldier in the house guarding him, making sure that he doesn't leave, make sure that he doesn't disturb the peace of the empire. And so he's probably over in the corner looking at a Roman soldier, and I'm sure they were trying to intimidate Paul, and so I'm sure that that soldier was all decked out in his armor. So Paul, Paul's probably looking him up and down, and he begins to talk about the armor that we have in God, and so here's our armor today. Write these down. First of all, it's the belt of truth. Truth. Truth is a weapon against the enemy. The devil is going to lie to you all week long. He's going to try to get into your head. He's going to try to whisper in your ear all week long. He's going to send those flaming arrows all week long. But truth is your weapon. Jesus is the truth. He's the way, the truth, and the life. His truth overcomes every lie of the enemy. It's the light that shines in the darkness and exposes the darkness, and the darkness has to flee. We live according to God's truth. And so my question to you today is, what is your source of truth? Who do you listen to? What do you watch? What do you allow into your ears and your eyes and your mind and your heart? Who's that person that their opinion matters more than anyone else's? Let me tell you, the truth comes from Jesus and his word. There's no person, there's no news channel, there's no radio program, there's no blog, there's no site on Facebook or Twitter, or Instagram that is stronger than the truth of Jesus and his word. Watch what your source is. 
Go back to his word. Truth is part of the battle and the armor that helps us defeat the enemy. Number two is the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness is a weapon in the battle against the enemy. I was thinking about righteousness and and who in the Bible could best give an example of righteousness. Now, obviously, we would talk about Jesus, who is our righteousness. But I was thinking of Bible characters, and I, I went to Noah. Noah was considered righteous. He lived in a day when no one else was righteous. Everybody was evil. The world was, God was just like, okay, I am done with everybody. But he found Noah. And why was Noah righteous? He, he wasn't perfect and by any stretch of the imagination. He wasn't perfect. You know what made him righteous? Is he listened when God spoke to him. He was obedient to what God told him to do. Even when the criticism came, even when he was made fun of, even when he was doing something, building that ark, he had no idea what he was doing, but, but yet he did it because God told him to do it and he was considered righteous. Righteousness is all about our relationship with God. All of the great characters throughout the Bible, they're righteous because they've had that relationship of faith and obedience and listening to God. It comes when we're right with God. And what's beautiful about the New Testament, beautiful about the church and us is that we are in Christ. And in Christ, we have the ultimate righteousness, right? In Christ, that righteousness is ours. And and if you read through the book of Ephesians, chapter after chapter, That term, in Christ, is there in multiple times in each chapter where he says, in Christ, in Christ, in Christ. And so in Christ, we are made righteous. There's no condemnation for us. There's no more fear. There's no more deception. We are protected from the enemy when we're walking in righteousness, when we're walking in Christ, when we are in faith, when we are obedient, when we are listening, when we're in relationship. And so righteousness is part of the battle. The shoes of peace. Peace, peace is part of our armor. There's not a lot of peace in the world, is there? Did you know that God is at a state of perfect peace all the time? He's, at this, he's got this perfect peace. I don't know about you, but when, when difficulties come my way, I lose my peace pretty quick. But yet, if, I, if I'm in Christ, if I'm walking with him, I'm at a state of perfect peace. And that idea of walking is important, the shoes, because I, I can't go anywhere my feet don't take me. I can't say I want to go over there, but my feet stay here. No, they, they have to go with me. The peace has to walk with you. It, it's great to feel peace on a Sunday, right, when we're singing and we're around the altar and God's good and the word's being preached and yes. You know, it feels good. I feel the peace of the Lord, but that peace needs to go with us wherever we go. Just as God is at that, that, that state of perfect peace, so we're called to be as well in relationship with him. I already said it, the world has no idea what peace is. They think they know what peace is. They have no idea what peace is. God's peace is shalom. It's wholeness. It's completeness. It's It's so beautiful, and so I have to walk and step with the Holy Spirit every day with my feet. I have to go because the world needs peace. Jesus said in the Beatitudes, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. When we walk in peace, we look a lot like God. The fourth part of our armor is the shield of faith. Faith is a weapon in the battle against the enemy. Just to give you context, the, the, the shields back then were, were actually quite large, almost as tall as a soldier himself, and they would be wrapped in leather, dipped in water, so in battle, uh, they could put the shield down, they would stand behind it, and so then the arrows would come from the enemies, even if those arrows were on fire, they'd hit the shield and they would be extinguished. The devil's going to shoot arrows at you all week long. Thoughts are going to come into your mind, and you're like, where did that come from? But even the flaming ones, when you raise that shield of faith, it's going to stop the enemy. That faith is so key. It says in Hebrews 11, 1 and verse 6, faith is a confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. It is impossible to please God without faith. Faith is the key that God will come through, that I need to 
put my faith in the armor that he's given me, in his power to stand strong, to be strong, no matter what comes my way. I remember when the boys were little, we would go up uh, in Wisconsin at places like Lake Geneva, and we'd step out on the ice in the middle of winter, and uh, so we would, you know, we'd go out there, and they'd be the ice fishermen out there, and they'd have their pickup trucks out there and all the things, and so I'd take the boys, and we'd step out onto the ice, and I remember they would get, they'd get so scared, like the ice was going to break, and they were going to fall in, and I'd have to point them, like, okay, if that truck hasn't fallen in, I don't think your little 50-pound body is going to go through. You know, it's like you, 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 can, you can have faith in this ice. But you know what? This is what's really important. It wasn't the faith in the ice that held us up. It was the ice holding us up. I don't even know how many feet thick that ice would have to be to hold those pickup trucks and, and those little, little buildings they built out there. and all. Like, that had to be some pretty thick ice, right? So it wasn't my faith. It was actually the ice. It's not your faith. It's God's power that will protect you. See, a lot of times you think, well, i got to have this, this huge faith. Jesus says, if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, you put it in me because I am big. I am giant. I am thick. I, I, can, I, can, I can hold you up. You don't have to worry about it. We have to put our faith in God. It's not faith in our faith. It's faith in God. Faith is a great weapon against the enemy. The next one is salvation. we got to make sure this is in place for the battle, and this is the first thing. This is like the most important thing. Jesus tells us in every single gospel why he came. Now, he came and he healed and he taught and he did amazing things, but that's not why he came. He tells us in every, in every gospel why he came. He says, I, I came to seek and to save the lost. I came to give my life as a ransom for many. I came to save my people from their sins. I, I, that's why I came. I came to be your Savior. Salvation is key. And I want to tell you today, if you have not surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, who came and died on a cross for your sins, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to put that helmet on, to, to stop the, the fiery darts of the enemy from hitting you in the head, hitting you in the mind, because when you are in Christ and salvation is a place, you are a new creature, you are a new creation, you have new life. It, go back to the beginning of this message in Ephesians 2.10, you are a masterpiece that God is working on and he is developing you. You have a transformed life and so you've got to have the helmet on and in place. That's the first thing. So key, so important. Back when I was a little boy, um, we didn't wear helmets when we rode bikes. It just, it just wasn't a thing. And then as uh, my kids were growing up, that became the thing, right, to, to wear helmets. And, and um, I'm glad they did. I had a friend who was an uh, adult my age, was riding his bike, not wearing a helmet, fell over, hit his head on the curb, and died. Helmets are important, right? I mean, that's, that's important for kids to wear a helmet. I, I, I got a quote here from... Uh, Children's Hospital in Los Angeles says, the brain is quite possibly the most important part of the body. It controls whether or not we breathe, our heartbeat, how we think, reason, make judgments, see, feel, hear, move, and so much more. So much is going on up here. We have to have the helmet of salvation in place. That's the first thing. I can't imagine a football player saying, I don't need my helmet. I mean, I think of all the protection that they wear, that's the one they would keep over everything else. Because it protects what's most important. What you think about. Like I love when we sing today. Even if I don't see it. Even if I don't feel it. God, you're still working. God, you're still the way maker. You're still the miracle worker. That, that I put that helmet of salvation on my head to protect how I think. Number six, the word of God. The sword of the spirit. That's what we have to fight the enemy. You can go throughout God's word. It, it talks about how powerful God's word is in, in Ephesians uh, 4.11, that it's sharper than any two-edged sword, cutting uh, to the soul, you know, and, and they don't want to go into all that, or Psalm 119, how it quickens us, the Word of God quickens us, all of these verses, there's power in God's Word, there's power in the rhema Word of God, the spoken Word of God, there's power in when Steve Sampson was here last week and giving words to different people, there's power in those words, there's power in the Word of God. And what you'll notice is that this is the only offensive weapon in the whole bunch. 
The, the rest of the armor is protective. It's something that shields us against the enemy. But how do we fight the enemy? We fight the enemy with God's word. We fight the enemy with what God says. Going back to Jesus being the truth, we believe and we speak God's word. And so we need to consume God's word. We can't just nibble on it here and there. We can't just wait till Pastor Daryl preaches a sermon on Sunday. That'll get me ready for the week. Here we go. We need to be in God's word. When the Israelites had fallen away from God, and they come back from uh, captivity, uh, Ezra begins to deposit the word back into the people of God. In Ezra, Ezra 7.10, it said, For Ezra had set uh, his heart to study the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach his statutes and rules in Israel. So here's just a, a few things we get from this passage of Scripture about getting the word of God inside of us. Number one, we need to study God's word. Study the word. You need to dive into God's word. It's great that we read most of uh, Ephesians 6, and we'll read a few more verses here as we, as we conclude our time together in just a moment, but, but it's good to read it in church, but I need to read it on my own. I need to study it. I need to be in my devotional. I need to be in a small. I need, I need to study God's word. And number two, I need to live God's word. It's not enough just to study it. I need to live it. It, it can't just be in my head. It has to be in my heart and in my actions as well. James says that, you know, don't just listen to God's word. Do God's word. Be a doer of the word. That's, that's key. And in um, the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus teaches us how to live our life. It's just a powerful teaching of, of all that he wants for our kingdom living. And then at the end, he comes to the parable, the only parable in the Sermon on the Mount, of the wise and foolish builder. The foolish builder builds on sand, and the wise builder builds on rock. And when the storm comes... The only thing that lasts is the one that was built on the, the rock. And, and he says this in Matthew 7, 24, who hears my words in mine and does them. That's the wise person. That's the wise builder. The one who hears these words of mine and does them. We are to be doers of God's word. We've got to live God's word. And number three, we've got to share God's word. We've got to share God's word. There's something powerful when I speak it with other people. When I, when I share it, like I, I'm, I'm with a brother or sister in Christ, I begin to share a small group, we begin to share God's word. There's this encouragement that comes when I share God's word, share with my family. You know, we just, we, you get into God's word and, and then to share it with other people who need to hear God's word. We might call that evangelism, whatever you want to call it, but you were sharing God's word. We're called to share it, not just to keep it to ourselves. What do we learn from this passage of scripture? We're in a battle and it's a serious battle. We equip ourselves with the armor of God. And I hope you wrote those down today. If you didn't, write them down now. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, salvation, the word of God. Get those inside of you and be strong in the Lord. As we come to a conclusion today, and this is probably the most important thing that I could say, it's this. You are not meant to fight the battle all alone. Any soldier that finds themselves isolated from the rest of their team of soldiers, um, that, that soldier that's alone is in trouble. And the enemy is going to do everything in his power to isolate you from other brothers and sisters in Christ. Jesus knew the power of, of being together. That's why he had the disciples. Even Jesus had people that he was with. You know that the church was Jesus' idea. He says, I will build my church, and this is what we're going to do. Because he said, I want people to gather together in my name. I want them to be strong together. You are not meant to fight this battle all alone. You are meant to fight in the power of God. Together, side by side. And so I'm going to ask you in the weeks to come to join a small group. The women meet on Wednesday nights right here at the church. The men, we're meeting at... We, kind of travel. We like food, so we're going to Bona Beef. Uh, you missed Texas Roadhouse last week, sorry, but this week, Bona Beef, we're going to meet at. And um, if you need any information where anything meets, uh, out in the lobby, Joel, Jennifer, they could tell you where we're meeting. We're going to meet, set or with all the married couples, soon to be married, very married, newly married, we're going to meet this Friday at uh, 7 p.m. up in room 205, and we'd love for you to be a part of that. We got a special announcement that night, too, so uh, we'd love for you to come. We're also going to provide, um, starting this weekend and every weekend, small group questions from the sermon. So it'll tell you 
uh, where you can find the sermon if you want to watch it online. In case you can't be here for a weekend, you can still watch a sermon. But the, the scriptures are there in questions. Uh, and, and these questions, they're not right or wrong answer questions to the sermon. They're just questions to dive a little deeper, to dig a little deeper. And I'm going to ask you to do that with someone else. Some of the small groups are actually going to use these questions. But I'm going to ask you to take the questions and, and maybe start with your family or start with somebody that you're close with and just say, hey, let's read the word together and, and answer these questions together. You're going to be stronger together as you do that. I'm going to ask you to maybe grab a cup of coffee with somebody this week and say, hey, let's, let's go over those questions together. Let's talk about it. If, if you're too busy or it just doesn't work to get together, Zoom. Everybody's Zooming, right? Zoom, 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 right? So get together. Say, hey, let's just do a Zoom call and talk about these questions together. Maybe you're sitting next to someone in church that you've seen week after week after week, and you need to say, hey, can we go to, can we go to lunch this week? Let's just, let's just go out to eat. Let's talk, about it. let's talk about the word that we heard today. There's power when we come together, and so these are going to be available every week after I preach. They're not available online yet right now. We're doing some transition with our website, and we'll have a new website very soon. But, uh, so it's not on the website, but uh, Joel has these in the lobby. So you can pick that up. Start with your family. Start with some close friends. Maybe grab somebody right now and say, hey, let's go to lunch and talk about it. But we're called to fight together. We're called to fight together. Don't fight all alone. Just to bring it to the conclusion, the last verse here of this section is verse 18. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions and with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keeping on pray and keep on praying for all the Lord's people. It's the final piece of the puzzle in this battle. Prayer. You got to pray. You got to keep praying. When you're in the battle, you keep praying. Because you're not going to win this battle on your own. You need to keep praying. It says in the Old Testament, you know, this, that, um, you know, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. We need to pray in the spirit, pray boldly, pray big prayers, because that's a big part of the battle. In Jude, as the New Testament is coming to conclusion, he says, but you, beloved, building yourself up in the most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. We are called to pray. So we have all this weapon, all these, these things that God gives us. And the final thing is pray, 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 pray. Amen? Can I pray for you this morning? Would you bow your heads and your hearts with me today? Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we want to focus on your word right now. And as you were teaching us how to fight in this battle, the last thing you told us to do is pray. And so, Lord, I'm going to pray for every brother and sister in Christ that is listening to this message right now. Lord, I'm believing that you are equipping them for battle. Lord, that you are fighting on their behalf. God, that you've given them every piece of armor that they need. And God, I pray that they would begin to pick up each piece of the armor, that they would begin to walk in your truth, that they would begin to walk in righteousness, that they would walk in peace and faith and salvation, and that we'd pick up the sword, the word, and we'd begin to fight the enemy, Lord. And God, that you would watch over us, that you would protect us, God, that you would Lord, you would take good care of us in the midst of this battle. Because, God, we don't want to fight this battle on our own because we can't fight this battle on our own. But, God, I thank you that this week you are with us every single day. And, Lord, I pray that we put on that, just put on that armor every day. That we would help our brothers and sisters in Christ put on this armor. Or that we wouldn't fight alone, but we'd have each other's back. Or that we would encourage each other, that we wouldn't just be nibbling on your word, but God, that we'd be diving into your word together. And Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to always open your word and worship you freely and openly. God, we're so grateful for that. So God, may we take advantage of it this week. May we walk in your word. May it find good ground in our heart and grow. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.